Welcome back to a Skyrim reading. This is An Explorer's Guide to Skyrim by Marcius Caravain, Viscount Bruma. Far too often, noble visitors from Cyrodiil see little more of Skyrim than the view from their carriage. To be sure, this coarse, uncivilized province is far from hospitable, but is also a place of fierce, wild beauty and grand vistas and inspiring natural wonders awaiting those with the will to seek them out and the refinement to truly appreciate them. If you are of mind to see Skyrim for yourself, I recommend beginning your adventure as I did by seeking out Stones of Fate. No doubt you were taken aback by the name as I once was. The provincials and village folk have all manner of dark tales about these ancient monuments. Stories of no necromatic rituals and fell spirits of great and terrible powers conferred on any who dared to touch them. The stories are, as Jarl Egrof once told me, a load of mammoth dung. A bit uncouth, but you get the point. To be sure, keep your guards with you at all times. Brigands and wild animals are never to be taken lightly. But the stones themselves are nothing to fear. Quite the contrary. Their proximity to cities and roads makes them ideal destinations for the novice explorer, and many boast spectacular views that make the journey well worth the effort. To whet your appetite, here are four such locations. Most travelers enter Skyrim by way of Helgen, gateway to the north. If you find yourself in this backwater hovel, consider taking an afternoon's ride to the north, keeping to the road as it winds down the cliffs at the eastern end of Lake Illinalta. Just off the path on a small bluff lie the three guardian stones, the greatest concentration of standing stones in all Skyrim. The view of the lake here at sunset is simply sublime. Visitors from Shaden Hall will pass through Riften, the city of intrigue and larceny since Tiber Septum's day. If you seek adventure in the Rift, leave the city by the southern gate and cast your gaze upon the bluff that rises to the south. Atop it sits the Shadow Stone, a fitting symbol for the city of Thebes. Whiterun is the heart of Skyrim, its towering palace rivaling even the great castles of Cyrodiil. But should you tire of the Jarl's hospitality, another adventure awaits a few hours to the east of the city, along the road that rises above White River Gorge. The Ritual Stone can be found atop the lone hill that rises on the north side of the road, set into an ancient monument. Take time to soak in the incredible view of Whiterun, the tundra, and the gorge from this unique spot. More seasoned explorers may wish to visit Markarth, the ancient city of stone far to the west. The recent Forsworn Rebellion has made travel to the Reach perilous, but for those determined to seek adventure, no matter the cost, another stone can be found east of the city, perched on the mountain above Kolskur Mine. Though the climb is difficult, reaching the summit is a milestone any explorer could be proud of. There are other stones of fate to be found in Skyrim. I myself have seen several more, perched on the most remote mountain peaks or wreathed in fog amid the northern marshes. But the true joy of exploration is in the discovery, and so I leave the rest to you. May the eight guide your steps. Our second book of today is The True Nature of Orcs. Orcs were born during the latter days of the Dawn Era. History has mislabeled them as beast folk, relating them to goblin races, but the orcs are actually the children of Trinimac, strongest of the Altmiri ancestor spirits. When Trinimac was eaten by the Daedroth prince Boethia and transformed in that foul god's insides, the orcs were transformed as well. The ancient name for the orcs is Orzmir, which means the pariah folk. They now follow Moloch and the, the remains of Trinimac. Who is Moloch? He is more commonly known as the Daedroth Prince Malakath, whose sphere is the patronage of the spurned and ostracized, the sworn oath and the bloody curse. He is not technically a Daedra lord, nor do the other Daedra recognize him as such, but this is fitting for his sphere. Of old, he was Trinimac, the champion of the High Elven Pantheon, in some places more popular than Uriel, who protected them against enemies without and within. When Trinimac and his followers attempted to halt the Velothi dissident movement, Boethia ate him. Trinimac's body and spirit were corrupted, and he emerged as Malakath. His followers were likewise changed for the worse. Despised by everyone, especially the involate Uriel, they quickly fled to the northern wastes near Sarthal. They fought Nords and Chimer for a place in the world, but did not get much. 
In Skyrim, Malakath is called Orke, or Old Knocker, and his battles with Yzmir are legendary. And that ends the book reading for today. These are a couple short books, but hopefully you guys enjoyed them. Uh, I guess orcs and, um, I don't know, Trinimac are a couple interesting things here. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time.